Hello everyone, this lecture is on forward kinematics. So here's our roadmap. We learnt about rotation matrices, then we put rotations to combine with translation to get transformation matrices, and now we're getting to forward kinematics. So the question we want to answer is, given a set of joint positions Q, what is the pose of the robot tooltip X? So X will be a func vector function of Q. So the forward kinematics problem. So given a set of joint angles or positions Q in the set of real values in N, then determine the position and orientation, the pose of the robot tooltip or end effector X in the set of real values in M. That is, we have to solve the vector function X equals F of Q or some equivalent. So before we can talk about forward kinematics, we should discuss the type of joints on a robot. So the first and most common type is a revolute joint, and we can have a single revolute joint as given in the picture here, where we rotate about the axis by an angle Q. We can combine two revolute joints to get a universal joint, like shown, where we have Q1 and Q2. So the axes of these are orthogonal to each other. And lastly, we can combine three of them to get a ball joint to have three degrees of freedom, as shown here. And this is equivalent to this type of ball joint structure. So we can represent this type of physical joint with this conceptual representation. And lastly, we have prismatic joints. So these translate along this axis of actuation here. So when we develop a robotic kinematic structure, we have different combinations of these types of joints in sequence. So let's look at the forward kinematics of a Tudor planar manipulator as given in this diagram here. So the task space we say is given by the X and Y position of the end effector. And we say that it is in the set of real values in two dimensions. And the joint or control space of the robot is Q, given by Q1, Q2, in the set of real values in two dimensions. Then the forward kinematics is X is a vector function of Q, will be L1 cos Q1 plus L2 cos Q1 plus Q2. So this is X. And then Y will be L1 sine Q1 plus L2 sine Q1 plus Q2. So this is Y. Simples. But what about orientation? Well, we can just combine Q1 plus Q2 will give the orientation phi, or psi, sorry, here. And we just append the task space with psi at the bottom. Let's take a look at a more complex example. So we have the forward kinematics of a 3 doff manipulator. So the task space is given by x, y, z in the set of real dimensions. And the joint control space is q1, q2, and q3. So the height of the end effector will be the z direction, which is l1 plus l2 sine q2 plus l3 sine q2 plus q3. Here. And then we also need to consider the distance of the end effector projected on the xy plane. So we're projecting on this plane here. And this is given by L2 cos Q2 plus L3 cos Q2 plus Q3. So now the distance of the end effector projected on the xy plane, as we previously defined as D, was L2 cos Q2 plus L3 cos Q2 plus Q3. So here we're looking at the robot from the top view, and that's the distance D. And so the X and Y position of the end effector is then D cos Q1 here for X, and this is L2 cos Q1 cos q2 plus l3 cos q1 cos q2 plus q3 and similarly y is equal to d sine q1 and it is given by this solution here so 
we just multiply again d by sine q1. And therefore the forward kinematics as a vector function of q is x l2 cos q1 cos q2 plus l3 cos q1 cos q2 plus q3. Y is L2 sine Q1 cos Q2 plus L3 sine Q1 cos Q2 plus Q3. And Z is L1 plus L2 sine Q2 plus L3 sine Q2 plus Q3. So this is getting much more complicated. Right, so we saw that the 2D planar robot was really simple forward kinematics. But once we expanded to a 3 off robot in three dimensions, it started to get very tricky. So the problem is that forward kinematics can be very difficult for complex robot structures. And what we want to do is find a simpler way to derive the forward kinematics. And on top of this, it needs to be applied universally to any sort of serial link manipulator. So the power of transformation matrices is that we can derive forward kinematics using them. So we can concatenate transformation matrices between joint frames to determine the end effect pose. So we just multiply transforms between joint frames all the way up the kinematic structure to get the transform from frame zero or the base frame to the end effector frame. Right, so this is just the product of all transforms from J minus one to J. But now we just need to describe the transform from j minus 1 to j as a function of simple geometry. So to summarize this lecture on forward kinematics, the general forward kinematics problem expresses the end effect of pose x in m dimensions as a function of the joint positions q in n dimensions. That is, x is a vector function of q. And we had two types of joints. The revolute joint, which we can expand to give single one doff joints, two doff universal joints, and three doff ball joints, and the prismatic joint, which translates, not rotate. Alternatively, we can chain the homogeneous transforms from joint to joint to get the end effect to pose. That is, we take the transform of j minus 1 to j from frame 0 to frame n to get the end effector pose.